What's going on with crypto today? We're definitely not in a period when we should be using any sort of leverage, in my opinion, but it's the 4th of October. Let's go through all the news so you can make up your own mind yourself. Quickly, let's start with virtual bacon. Basically happening today, we're going to have some September jobs uh, report in terms of unemployment. This data will be released in the US. Depending on the percentage, the markets will probably respond like this. 4.2%. So if there's just an un unemployment of 4.2%, be very bullish and then very bearish if it's, or bearish if it's like 4.5%. So you have to keep in mind that if we get anywhere near here, then the markets could react poorly. In general though, like this is just one piece of the puzzle. We've got the job data, but there's also the fact that there is major escalation happening in the Middle East. And I don't actually know how much, you know, the division is. There are people on both sides and this is creating like a massive amount of conflict and there isn't like clear direction from the US government where there has been in the past. They will of course be protecting Israel, but it's still, you know, quite a, a scary time, of course, uh, you know, with previously last year, I believe when the US pulled out all the troops from the Middle East, uh, it just looks a little bit more difficult. So BTC, we've got, it needs to hold 60K for a bounce. Otherwise we can dump further and uh, best strategy I think is just do not do any leverage. We also have this news here that money electric, the Bitcoin mystery, this will be claiming to reveal the true identity of Bitcoin's creator, Satoshi Nakamoto. Now, this will be very interesting. This will be actually coming out on HBO. I'll definitely be watching it next Wednesday at 9 PM Eastern standard time. So. I do not think they will actually know the true identity, but I do think it's made for very, very good, you know, publicity. A lot of people will be tuning in for that. Having a look here at the, the state of the market, we are a little bit of green. If we change this to seven day performance, there's plenty of red. Ethan sold down over 10%, but then if we zoom out further, we're doing okay. Sol, b and we're, we're doing okay. ETH has still been struggling in general. We are greedy, but not super greedy. It's come down a little bit. I guess it's more in the, the fearful act, actually. We uh, got up to 61 and now we've come on down a little bit. Now, just keep in mind that like in general, we are up in October, but it's very important to understand that centralized exchanges and big whales, but the big whales are, you know, your Binance's of the world. They make a lot of money if they liquidate a position. So if a trader, if everyone's thinking it's October and they start longing, and they can go in with more, you know, they can spoof the market so they can put in big sell walls that then disappear. They can just, you know, add lots of leverage. They can see if everyone's positions as well, which, which means that, you know, if you're looking at it, uh, from that viewpoint, centralized exchanges help a lot, but they also hurt a lot. What I'm trying to get at is the fact that although I think it will be a good month when everyone thinks something quite often, the opposite is true because you know, there's enough data there to counter trade back. So in general, October, good, but every now and then there's been some bad ones, but also keep in mind that we don't want to be like overly bullish until we see some bullish news. There wasn't necessarily uh, major conflicts, like major, major conflicts in these previous years. It would be in some of them. However, you know, it's the 4th of October. There's still plenty of time in October. All of September was red right up until around just after token 2049. Also, you need to keep in mind that the S&P 500 is a little bit different to crypto and that typically in October, it tends to go down, especially in a presidential election year, but there's not like perfect correlation between crypto and the S&P 500. Another reason for Bitcoin going down is the fact that Bitcoin ETFs, which are doing very, very well, um, they're actually starting to have some outflows every now and then. So we can't see it here, but we can see 45 billion dollars and we've got uh, a little bit more data here on the big the three big uh, glass node has data on the cost basis of the three biggest etf issuers and they're doing very very well there's also 2000 etfs launched this decade and if we click on this we can see that this one was launched in 2024 and this one in 2024 these are both bitcoin ones and they have they're in the top 10 and they've just been launched this year back in January. They're doing well. Things are doing well. When you zoom out and really look at the big picture, doing very well. So this is what I'm referring to when I say that, you know, ETFs, they can see big outflows. So there was a big outflow just recently, and we're looking at hundred million dollars, but in general, huge amount of inflow, right? Huge amount of inflow and certainly a lot more inflow than outflow. Also on the subject of October, 
people were going, I'm seeing on the timeline from doom to gloom in a heartbeat. So like, you just keep in mind that, you know, this is the start of quarter four. We do see better performance in November typically, but you still don't want to just go from doom to gloom. There are some people that I've seen that are like massive accounts that are looking at like, you know, ETH going to $1,200 and things like that. If that's, if that fits your narrative, fine, but it doesn't fit mine. And I think it, we're still in this major uptrend. There's too many things going on. The bond guys, uh, viewpoint is very simple. I do not recommend playing with leverage at this point. Things could get aggressively volatile with the war in the Middle East. And remember Binance, Bybit, all these big exchanges, they can manipulate things to their advantage. They make money. We have a little bit of random news here from an Ethereum ICO participant who did very well buying a huge amount of ETH at $46,500 many years ago, and has just sold another 50 million. So he's been selling, 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 and he's just sold another massive amount. This is another reminder. I'm not going to remind you too many times, but I feel like this is certainly worth your, your doing if you're happy to do some KYC. So this is World Liberty Financial from Trump's team. And this is a, the screenshot here. Once it's done from my uh, assistant, he's done it himself and I will be doing mine as well. There is a little bit of cringe though. So I'm just going to be honest. So this one here at Mollcoin ETH, thank you for liking my post. So obviously Donald Trump has a team. So there's a public relations team. There's people that know crypto, people that know that this is worth, you know, shouting out. I'll send you important election updates for North Carolina. Make sure you're ready to vote for Donald J. Trump by November 5th. Uh, quite interesting. <laughs> not fun. I mean, these guys, uh, I mean, it's, it's just kind of interesting. So I'm not, I'm just interested. I'm interested to see why it's the marketing technique is like this, but it doesn't matter. All right. To the calendar, plenty of things happening today. So just have a look. Remember, it should be uh, bookmarked. Get amongst that. One big thing is Jupiter. They have now Jupiter portfolio. So we'll cover it in a decent tutorial another day. But you can now like see all of your open orders just very easily. So Jupiter is becoming this mega DAP. It connects everything in the ecosystem. So it makes Solana better by also winning themselves. Also, limited orders are now processing about 20 times faster. So as an example, you can go and set a buy order on Jupiter for a lot lower, you know, like sold like $100. It may not fill, but you can go and put it there. I've even got some sell orders there actually at like, $600, $700, just in case, you know, in the future we get there and there's a nice little jump up and I'm sleeping. If I take profit, cool. Also in general, there's a lot more liquidity that can go through with a very little slippage. So P2 Mu, 500, uh, sold into some MSOL, almost just over 71,000, very little in the way of fees. However, P2 Mu and others, remember, take your soul and just go and stake it with validate.com as well. Jupiter is now the ranking second as the largest, second largest derivative protocol by 24 hour on-chain trading volume. And this is very important because of JLP. So I'm sounding a little bit more monotonous right here. So let me just be clear. JLP, I've done videos. They're on the Jupiter Exchange video, video YouTube channel. When people use the JLP perps, and I do use JLP perps from time to time, not now necessarily, but other traders that know what they're doing, or at least think they know what they're doing, will use it. And they generate a massive amount of fees. And remember, 75% of those fees go back to the JLP token. So it does very, very well. Unless, of course, there's some massive trader that just completely outperforms the market. But in general, JLP will do exceptionally well. And now you can start earning a huge amount, APY, in 30 seconds by leveraging it up with a multiply, which is all done in Camino. And I've covered this so many times. I want to be clear, the only way that I hold JLP, most of it is in Camino, small amounts in NX Finance, and it's all leveraged stuff. I'm not just holding it spot, not financial advice. The LFG checker for Dbridge is live, so you can check your eligibility. And just as a reminder, uh, like just use this natively. If you want to bridge to another ecosystem, use this if it works, just so you can season two points. Fabiano has a, a decent post regarding the tokenomics is still like nothing super, super clear. That makes me go, wow, I've really thought of everything and I don't like that about it, but you can read this if you're keen. Uh, and in terms of like a, a price prediction right, right now, like we're looking at just under three cents. So the FDV 300 million, if it goes higher, then you can see that you would be profitable if you're just farming the airdrop at present, you'll probably be slightly down. 
With Arkeem, you've got now a day left to go and grab this NFT. So it's part of the actionables. Get amongst it. Tensor Foundation is discontinuing. Price lock was an easy decision, but after careful consideration, we believe this is the right move. So look, NFTs are struggling and long and shorting them. It just, you know, I guess it didn't work out. Soul Layer, not something I'm extremely excited on, but people are asking me about it. This is like the restaking network. I'm happy to chat with the team. But of course, stake yourself with Valde.com. They've gone and created a yield bearing USD with a US Treasury bill interest. Now, this is quite interesting. I don't know how it all works because I chatted with someone from PayPal uh, at Breakpoint and he said, like, very difficult to do this legally. So go have a play if you like, but look into it yourself. I'm not going to be doing it. I'm just going to stick boring and just go PYUSD, put it in Camino, put it into Lulu, of course, mostly Lulu, then it can route around. And that's what I'm going to do. But if you want to get involved in this, I'm just putting it on your radar. Greed Academy, congratulations to all the students who graduated. Uh, the distribution will be powered by Streamflow, which is a great tool, by the way. And the classes will continue. That was like semester one, semester two. They'll be working on that as well. There's been almost a billion dollars bridged from other chains to Solana over the past month. This is massive. So there is liquidity coming here. And this is why most of our attention goes onto Solana. There's been some on Terra Ethereum, but the other one to keep in mind is Sui. Not a lot to do over in Sui yet, but you can see Solana and Sui, the big ones, and then all of these ones, uh, not so much. It's pretty important to see when money leaves an ecosystem like Arbitrum, that's, uh, that's, you know, that means you don't want to go and play on that ecosystem, in my opinion. Solana DeFi hit a massive, almost 5.7 billion, probably down a little bit now because of the fact that the sole price has come on down. But this will grow and grow and grow. For those that think uh, we can flip ETH in terms of TVL, I definitely do not think so. Not this cycle. But keep on growing this. And TVL is, it's one metric. Sanctum. Let's talk about Sanctum. Very, very bullish on Sanctum for multiple reasons. And there's still a lot more information that I want to actually cover. Uh, people are going to be asking about it. So I just want to put a little trickle of information until we do a proper deep dive. So as an example, they went from a very small amount of TVL to a, a significant amount of TVL. And then they basically stuck it. They, they kept it. So this will grow and grow and grow. They had a, a rocky token launch in terms of the decision for earnestness, which was their decision. But this is one of the reasons why it kind of went down, but probably the sell price went down as well. But they've got almost a billion dollars of total value locked. They also have Binance and Bybit, BB Soul and B in Soul which helps bridge the gap between sexes and DeFi. And I do like cloud. If we have a look here at cloud, we can see that when we just compare it to Sol and BTC, there's not as much data, of course. So we, we don't want to be overly bullish or blinded by our bag bias, but it's outperformed and outperformed, you know, as an altcoin, it's done exceptionally well. And those that are discounting it, probably not a good idea to discount it, to, to be honest. Jump over to Masari. And by the way, I'm using Masari every day now. Great research tool. There's no referral system here, by the way. But if you do sign up for a pro account, I'm not going to mention it too much until like we're really familiar with it so that everyone knows how to use it. If you use SEB15, you get like a discount. But I don't get a kickback or anything. Um, but I, I like it a lot. So we've got some things are covered very well. And what we can see here is a market cap of seven, almost 72 million, fully diluted 400 million. Now they did this massive, massive post here. This we can cover, we'll cover in our condensed form. It will take like over 10 hours for research to, to put it together. And then we'll do a similar kind of tokenomics breakdown after we've done the dupe token, um, like what we did with Camino. If you haven't seen the Camino one, go and do it. Let's just scroll on down here until we find what I was just referring to. So they've got a, a prediction, a bullish prediction, uh, that Sanctum could reach an, an, a fully diluted valuation of eight. 142 million, which is like 2.1x from where it is right now, putting the token price at around 82 cents. Um, that is 842. Sorry, that's that's a base. The bullish sentiment is far higher. Uh, so, you know, that, that that just depends on how much they can accumulate in terms of liquid staking soul and and a few other metrics. We'll go through it in more particular, like with more particulars, but I just want to put on your radar now so you're aware. Keep in mind though, that some people got a massive earnest airdrop and that will be claimable. So you, maybe you want to DCA into these levels. Maybe the market will absorb this. All this starts to get unlocked 
in January. I mean, you can claim it now, but you, you miss out on stuff. Otherwise you wait until January and you get more. A couple of people that got th this amount, which is well done to them. And there are other people that got smaller amounts, depending on how much you help. We've got this from Marku as well, showing how much has been claimed. I might, uh, Muff, if you watch this or, or if you know who I am, it'd be great if you could kind of talk us through this a little bit more, just because I think not all the metrics are perfectly working for me, or I'm just not super, super, uh, sure how it works. So like, for example, earnestness allocation, there's some that have been claimed, but they seem to be smaller amounts than I was expecting. Uh, either way we've got, you know, we've got a kind of a Dune analytics on flip side kind of vibe to it. And in terms of the token unlocks, which are always very important to keep in mind, it hasn't loaded for us perfectly, but there's nothing happening for, I think, 108 days. Let's just see if we can get that. 106 days. So we've got 106 days before some of this actually starts to unlock. 18th of Jan, 2025. Let's jump onto the actionables. So World Liberty Financial, up to you. Nothing financial advice, of course. Complete your KYC. DCA on Bonk with Flocky, Doge, and Cat. None of that's financial advice. You know, meme coins are clearly properly the narrative. You can fill out some limit orders on Jupe on Sol, but below 130. Do you say into Sol or accumulate however you like, but stake it and stake it with Velday.com and watch a recording of the Solana ecosystem call, maybe on 2x speed. That was where Cash was chatting with many things going over a lot of stuff. It brings you up to speed and it'll take you at 2x speed, like 35 minutes. Airdrop actionables, cube exchange, earn blocks, use my referral, mint, then mint the Archeum. So this is week one and week two NFT. I think it's just, sorry, mint the Archeum week two NFT. There's an error there. And in general, provide liquidity in Judosol and Sol Meteora pool. Sorry, another small misspelling there, but you understand what it is. In Camino, that gets you precious met points. So that's all for today. Thanks very much for tuning in and we'll catch you tomorrow.